770,000 bottles each hour. Let that sink in. That's quite a lot of beer. And the reason why we have to upskill so much... Uh, actually, are there any Americans right here? What it used to look like over here, we've got uh, the ingredients that came with Vianek now because of course the Heineken Brewery.
hope you are enjoying your visit. I am Charmaine Kamal, the fourth generation of the Heineken family. By now, you know that my great grandfather, Kevin Abdul, founded the company in 1864 right here in Austria. My grandfather, Kevin, and my father, Alfred, known as Freddie, continued to grow the company, and my family and I are committed to continuing this proud of the enterprise. The Heineken brand and the Heineken company have been built around three core values. An uncompromising passion for the quality of our beer, from the ingredients we use to how we brew and bottle. Great respect for people and cultures and for the world in which we live. And that's why we continuously try to reduce the impact we have on our farmers. And a total commitment to the responsible enjoyment of the beer we bring. By focusing on these core values, we'll continue to ensure a sustainable future for our company, our employees, and our shareholders. On behalf of the Heineken family and all those who work for Heineken around the world, thank you for your visit. We hope that you enjoy drinking Heineken as much as we enjoy brewing it for you. Each and every Heineken brewery, so we can purify the local water, so it is the same as the Dutch one, because the original Heineken recipe was created here in the Netherlands with the Dutch water. Enough about that. We're going to move on talk about the barley. Um, the bar barley is a type of cereal, and that is the only ingredient that we don't grow here in the Netherlands. Do you know why? The clue is in that picture right here. What is there on that picture? Weather. Weather. There's sun and heat. Well, we don't have in this country sun and heat. So basically, we don't have the right climate to grow uh, cereals and barley uh, specifically. So we have to take it from south of France because good for them, they have the right climate. When we take the barley, we take the whole grain. And the first thing we have to do is to roast it, which um, is a very important part of the whole process because it gives the color of the beer. You know how Heineken looks. So from now on, you know the Heineken is nothing else but golden because we roast our barley until it's golden color. Me and my colleagues, we're very sensitive on that topic, so we don't want to hear the Heineken is yellow, amber, caramel, anything else but golden. Um, from here, you can also deduce that other beers that are darker color, that I cannot exactly name, they just lost their serious way longer and that's how they get their color. Um, the second, that, the second uh, step when we take the barley is to grind it. And here I have a bowl of grinded barley, you can touch it, you can smell it, some people even eat it. It's totally up to you, it's just a cereal. So when we uh, grind it actually, uh, that's a very important part because uh, we take the inside out of the grain, which is the white particles, which is actually starch. <laughs> And that is very important uh, for the third step because then uh, the third step is the time when we add the first ingredients together, the water and the barley. And uh, we heat it up to 78 degrees. And this, uh, this makes the starch release different sugars. And that sugar you drink, that is the end product, is actually uh, the base of the beer. It's called port and you're going to be able to see it in the next room. Um, enough about that, we're going to move on talking about the hops. I do have a bowl of hops right here, but they also smell very intense. So I'm trying to stay away from them, but I invite you after my story to come and take a smell yourself. For now, we're just going to look uh, at this picture right here, which is a hops plantation. Uh, and hops are very tall in basic plant. They grow up to 30 centimeters per day, uh, 8 meters in total. Um, however, we don't use the whole plant because in the trunk there is a lot of fat and the fat is going to ruin the foam. Of course, we don't want to ruin the foam. So what we do is we attach, we actually uh, use this part <laughs> of the plant, which is the unfertilized peanut part of the plant because it has lupulin. And lupulin is a natural preservative, which is great because number one, it means that we don't have to add anything artificial, so Heineken stays quite healthy. And number two, once bottled up, Heineken can stay on the shelf for up to two years, which is great because we don't waste beer. Uh, but the hops are also important for two other reasons. Number one, they create the firm foam on top of Heineken, which is our protective layer. We really care about it. And number two, they create the bitter aftertaste. So as Heineken experts, you're going to leave this building knowing that Heineken is not bitter, but it has a bitter aftertaste. 
And lastly, we're going to be talking about the Heineken AEs. It's our special <laughs> ingredient, our secret ingredient. Only eight people around the world have access to it, and you guys can try it and know one of them. But what I can do is very limited. Um, what I know is that it was created more than 100 years ago by Dr. Edian. Uh, I don't know if you read about it, but he was a student of Louis Pasteur. So he created the AE specifically for Heineken, and we have been using the same one ever since because it's a microorganism. And this one, it just keeps regenerating itself, so we don't have to do much. We just have to keep it and use it correctly, which is exactly what we have been doing for more than 100 years. And also, all the Heineken breweries, more than 170 around the world, are taking AEs from the same microorganism so we can deliver the same quality all around the world. Uh, why is the AE so important? You might be asking yourself. Well, you remember when we added the water and the barley together and we created the sugary drink? Something has to happen with the sugar because Heineken is not exactly sweet. So what happens is that we add the AEs and the AEs start eating the sugar. And that's the beginning of the fermentation process, which takes seven days. And at the end, we have two things. CO2, the exciting bubbles inside your beer, and of course, alcohol, which is why you're here at the end of the day. On the seventh day, we're still not done, because then we have to lager the beer, because Heineken is a lager beer, which means that we just put the beer into a horizontal container, so all the flavors can mature, and also because it's a horizontal container, all the solid particles flow down naturally, which is how we naturally filter the beer, because Heineken is a very clear beer, and just like that, for 28 days, we have a perfect Heineken right in front of you. If you have any questions, you can come and ask me. Other than that, the tour continues this way, and I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna wait for you yet with two big Heineken's. Cheers, guys, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. You can also smell the hot stuff. Yeah.
get the mesh. It is the mesh, yes. So, do you remember which two ingredients were inside of it? Uh, water and barley. Yes, barley. amazing. So, these are the water and barley together. And um, this is like a small kettle we use in uh, between our process. As you can see over here, we have four kettles. These are the original ones we used to use. These are the more modern ones. Um, also, four, because we need four for one batch. So, we put that. Uh, barley and water together in the first kettle. This is where we just mix it and then we want to heat it up. I think you learned that in the last room as well because then all the sugars can come out of the barley but you couldn't just heat it up in one sitting so we needed to move part of the mixture to the second kettle. This is where we heat it up and then it comes back and this is kind of back up for the process until we reach about 78 degrees. This is the perfect temperature where all the sugars come out of the barley and you have this liquid. Um, if you ask me, it doesn't really look appetizing. You have these different parts in it and you obviously don't know parts inside of your beer. So in our third kettle, we filter. So this means one side you will get the seeds. We used to use this to uh, feed our animals because they were so really nutritious. And on the other side, you have the liquid. The liquid we obviously go on with. We go on to the fourth kettle where we add our third mix, the third ingredient. Do you guys remember? Oh, it's amazing. So this is for the foam layer, for the taste and for the uh, preservative. We add the hops, this got mixed again. Yeah, we just have one ingredient left, but we have a little more time left. Guys, this will make sure it doesn't take that long, a few hours. And then after that, we want to add our yeast. First, we add it in a, ferment, uh, in a vertical fermentation tank. So we move out of the kettles and go into the tanks. Um, and the yeast cake kind of works its way up. It eats the sugar, turns it into carbon dioxide and the alcohol, like you learned. And this will take around seven days because the yeast can just do its job all the way. And then at the end, we want to cool our mixture down because it's still kind of warm and we don't want to have warm beer. So we put it in a horizontal tank. Back in the days on our sixth floor right here, we had a cool ship. It's a Dutch word for a cooling down ship. And basically where we put our beer down, it was a really easy process. We opened our windows because, well, it's cold in the Netherlands and the beer was cooled down. This will take around 21 days. The um, aromas could develop a bit more. Um, and this process is called laughing, which is a Dutch-German-ish word. Um, and basically means just um, the aromas could develop. So this is 28 days later. So an entire beer will take around 28 days to develop. Um, yeah, that is it. If you guys have any questions, you guys can ask. Did, did you just use the cool ships to break down the temperature or did you ferment? Um, well, the process called laughing um, it was going on there, so it was to um, develop flavors. It was it was to
to create a sugary liquid called Mars. Yes, 
like bananas. Can you smell bananas right there? If you get out of the room, it is beer time. Look over there. Take a beer. The barley exactly the one. She has to go better. Champions, that's why you're gonna lose. Come on, you will taste better.
はい